Well, guys, Tyson and Jones combined age 105 years, and they got in there and slugged it out last night. It was the best fight on the card, and we're talking about that and the co-main event right now. What's up, Barn Hill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So, Nick, we had quite a bizarre, interesting uh, evening of fights this weekend. Yeah. You know, we were super excited as MMA guys for the Derek Lewis fight. And that right. main event obviously got canceled because Curtis Blades tested positive for mm -hmm. COVID-19. Um, so we kind of settled for a pay-per-view event between two legends of the sport, albeit both in their 50s at this point. But in a way, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones didn't disappoint. I thought it was exciting. Yeah, and with Derek Lewis and Curtis Blades' fight getting taken out of the weekend's lineup of, of fights, which, uh, in all honesty, uh, the UFC had a bit of a top-heavy card. That Der Derek Lewis and Curtis Blades were, were carrying that card. And then the... Uh, the thriller boxing, you know, extravaganza, experiment, whatever you want to call concert. it, concert. <laughs> yeah, the concert, the the boxing match, whatever you want to call it, was a bit of a strange card. So, um, one thing I will say is uh, the the UFC card did deliver in a lot of ways. Yeah. It there wasn't a ton of name recognition on the card, but it did make for a lot of great fights. But uh, as we far see as that a lot when you have a card with not a lot of name recognition, the fights themselves tend to deliver. And yeah. I don't know if it's just because there's guys like, hey, look, there's not a big name that's going to mm -hmm. overshadow me on this card. Uh, I have a chance here to, to do something. And maybe you just there's something in the air on those nights. But yeah. Yeah, I have noticed lately that cards that you can that are kind of sleeper cards mm -hmm. end up being some of the most compelling and exciting matches. Right. And, and even Dana White said that, you know, he gave out the performance of the nights, the fights of the nights, the knockouts, all of that. Uh, and then he said he was going to write a few more checks. So he was very impressed with the, the fights. And hopefully uh, this helps some people get their names recognized for the future. But for the thriller boxing match show that they put on, um, that was a wild night of fights. Yeah. There's there's no other way to put it than it was just a wild night. You know, we from seeing Mike Tyson, which personally I'm too young to have ever watched Mike Tyson. I wasn't yeah. into combat sports and boxing when he had uh, when he was in his heyday, of course, and then when he retired. Uh, he was a, a bit before my yeah. time. Well, and you were actually in the single digits of age. The last time he stepped in the in when the he ring. retired, yeah, yeah. in so, two thousand and five, yeah. So I was I was just a young kid, nine or ten years old, and uh, I I always knew about him. Obviously, I've seen the highlights and stuff like that, but I didn't even know too much about Roy Jones Jr. I'd seen his most recent fights and kept up to, with uh, his boxing matches from the time I got into boxing, but that wasn't very much either. So I didn't know a ton about them, but I. Well, let me take that back. I did know a lot about them, but it was all highlights and past. Right, stuff, right. Yeah. You're watching fights on YouTube. You're right. seeing highlight reels and stuff like that. But to actually see them in there in real time doing what they do. And what and in a, in a, in a lot of ways, it was just kind of a not so sharp version of their old selves. Roy right. Jones was doing the stick and move. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, you know, obviously his head has always been hard to find throughout his entire career. And that was no right. different here. The best shots and the most success that Tyson found was to the body. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyson was that classic super tight stance, bob and weave, work my way in and, and punish you with some powerful uppercuts and hooks. And that was what we saw. A couple of things. I, I'm glad they did two minute rounds. Yeah. Three minute rounds are far too long for guys of that age. Right. And I'm glad they did eight rounds. And by the way, I wish that boxing would just go to eight rounds. That was Max. so much yeah. more exciting than a 12 round match where you have three feel out rounds, which is really just the unwritten rule of we're going to let each other uh, take a few rounds off because nobody can fight for 12 rounds and nobody wants to see anybody fight for 12 or 15 rounds. Right. And I'd venture to say that the, uh, of the two minute rounds in each round for the, uh, Roy Jones Jr. And Mike Tyson fight a minute of each round was spent in the clinch yeah. tied up so they could both catch a break. You know, it, when they would clinch up, you wouldn't see, uh, Roy Jones Jr. Throw any punches. You would see Mike Tyson throw some to the body, but that's a, a telltale sign of an experienced fighter catching his breath. And that's exactly what he was doing. He would lock yeah. up in there, take a few deep breaths, let the ref split him up. He'd take a couple steps back when the ref did push him up, 
push him away so the, the clock would run out. That's a veteran move that you also see as a very inexperienced non-veteran move uh, in the fight before that, the co-main event, which was Jake Paul, Nate Robinson. Uh, you, you're either a veteran and you, and you clinch up because you're getting a break or you're an inexperienced novice who clinches up because you're afraid to get hit. And yeah, that's exactly it, what you yeah, saw. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that fight. That was... Uh... That was something. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the, the basketball, sh- from the basketball shoes to the knockdowns and everything. But, but you know, with, with Tyson and Jones, and, and they showed in a lot of ways that there's levels to this game. When you see yes. a young man like Jake Paul who's in there saying, this is going to be my career now. He's 23 years old. These guys could be his grandfather, right. you know, and the skill that they, that they possess even still at more than twice his age is levels and levels and levels above right. even still at this point. So, you know, if Jake's going to continue, he's got a long way to go and develop his skill set, not saying it can't be done. But with, with Tyson and Jones, I liked that there was an unofficial scorecard. I liked that they brought in, uh, you know, sort of celebrity judges who mm-hmm. judge, judge all the big boxing matches, whatever, whatever. And they got to score the rounds. And even though it was a draw, there was some resolve at the end of the night. You got to hear how individual judges score it. One had it for Tyson, one had it for Jones. And I think the other had it 4-4 four, because four, it was an yeah. even round uh, match. Um, but I, I, think, I think that was cool. I think there was something, I think it sort of paved the way for this legends only boxing league that mike tyson is talking about yeah. and when you think of people like anderson silva you know you have fedor milianenko out there you have people tyson evander holyfield people that are up there in age that were legends that really did a lot for the sport whether it be boxing or mma are able to showcase their skills in what i would consider a little less than a real fight a little more than a sparring mat, mat session so yeah. and it's it's cool i think that, that that actually last night i was a bit concerned that this might get out of hand. You know, Mike Tyson is known for his power. Uh, Jones is known for his speed. If we know anything about age in a fighter, the speed goes long before the power. For sure. So I thought that Mike Ty- that Roy Jones might be there without the same speed that he used to have, getting hit by almost the same power that Tyson possessed back in the 80s mm-hmm. and 90s. But it ended up being a really good match. I don't think anybody took any serious damage. And I think that they sort of did pave a way here to do some some fun events. I think in you're the right. Future. I think you're right. There's a market. We they real they showcased to us last night that there's a market for uh, legends, if you will, uh, fighting and competing against each other in a in a league of their own, the League of Legends or whatever they're calling it. Um, it's it's really good uh, on their part, on Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. part, that they put on such a competitive fair performance in the first showing of yeah. this experiment because if it would have if mike tyson would have gone and knocked roy jones jr out or vice versa it probably yeah. would have been the one and only thing that league of legends thriller does as a boxing promotion with the 50 plus year old guys and stuff because it it would have looked really bad the fact that they both made it all the way through the 16 minute fight and uh, they both appeared to be just fine and not only appeared to be just fine with the 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 fight, but the outcome was the most important thing. At 50 years old, we don't need to tally up on their score, their, their, you know, uh, records of old. We don't need to, to keep to to adding add to on that. to those. Yeah. Let's just leave them how it is. They can all be draws and we can all draw our own conclusion. And I think that uh, yeah. when you get a bunch of responsible veterans like Anderson Silva, like uh, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr., these type of guys in the ring, they're going to, put on a show for the people that clearly wanted to see it. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what the pay-per-view numbers were on this. I think they'll be pretty high, but not yeah. for more than what we expected. I, I'll tell you, I was genuinely surprised yeah. when I was checking social media last night and, you know, my personal pages, people who I'm friends with that have no interest in combat right. sports, people that I don't talk in, you know, we have our circle of MMA friends, our jujitsu buddies, you know, the people that we box with, they, they, wa- we're all marks. We, we watch buy everything. everything. We, right. we like, we're, we're the best uh, clients of those organizations because right. no matter what type of crap they put in front of us, we're going to click the buy button on That's the, right. on the pay-per-view. But I was surprised to see some of our friends who are not as into combat sports or not at all into combat sports were posting on their stories that they were watching this. Right. Which does kind of lead me to my next point and to the co-main event. I know a lot of people uh, really have dogged Jake Paul and Nate Robinson for doing this. Um, Jake Paul obviously talks a big game and he 
mention certain people, i.e. Conor McGregor, Dylan Dennis, that he has a 0% chance of actually defeating. And I think deep down he knows that. But that being said, someone like a Jake Paul is going to bring eyes to uh, a sport. And even Mike Tyson said it, said it in the post-fight interview. I didn't even know who Jake Paul was before he was announced as the co-main event. My son told me who he is. Uh, and then I look him up. He's got 25 million YouTube subscribers. And people who don't watch boxing are going to be enjoying a boxing match. And even though that fight wasn't really much of a boxing match, they're going to watch Badu Jack, who's yeah. a guy who, who, who fought right before the co-main, who's a pro boxer, been a world title holder. You have two legends in Tyson and Jones. And, and maybe, you, maybe you bring some eyes and some people to the sport that wouldn't normally be here. And so I, I, I do believe that there is a lane for the Jake Pauls. And I do believe that there's a market. Obviously, there's a market for him. What I don't really like is when you see somebody... Because Jake actually looks like he's been training boxing. With Nate Robinson, it appeared that it was a guy that hits the pads once or twice a week, getting in there and really fighting. They said that he did twice a day, six days a week, so 12 sessions a week for an entire year of training. Uh, what I saw last night was a guy that, one, didn't do any sparring, yeah. no, no sparring. He was very uncomfortable in there. And two, there's no way that a guy who, with his level of athletic ability really and truly trained for a full year two a day, six days a week, and was at the level, uh, uh, the beginner level that I saw him at last night. Yeah, and, and the, the nervousness and the, the tense, you know, demeanor that he carried in the, in the uh, I almost said octagon, in the ring against Jake Paul showed that he was not familiar with getting hit in the face, especially without uh, headgear on and stuff like that. And I believe he was even, if you go back and watch the highlights, his mouth was open when he would run a bull rush Jake Paul and stuff like that. And that's just the signs of somebody who d truly doesn't know what they're doing. And, uh, you know, people always say, well, it takes a, a certain type of person, a tough person to step into the ring. I do be agree with that. And not a lot of people are willing to go get into a fight, even though pretty much everybody on the planet will say that they're willing to do yeah. that. So I guess we can give Nate some props on that. But don't sign up for something that you're not going to, especially something that you can really hurt yourself in, that you're not going to train and devote some serious time and effort into. Yeah. Because Jake Paul, I mean, that's what he's doing right now. He's not posting YouTube videos. He's Aside from the music and stuff, he's training every day. And he really does want to hurt people. And, uh, you know, he, obviously he's got a long way to go with the box boxing skills and yes Jake Paul it's he has proven to us that he can beat up other YouTubers people that play video games people that played other sports and, and who knows what's going to happen when he steps into the ring with a real boxer right. or a world champion MMA fighter which is who he's calling out now which I find just baffling if you're going to call somebody out to fight you don't say come do this sport you know, Conor McGregor is a unarmed combat martial artist. Right. Jorge Masvidal, who he also called out, unarmed combat mixed martial artist. Ben Askren has thrown less punches in his career than Jake Paul. But don't call these guys out and try to say, but you don't come do my sport because it right. makes you look like you're, you're protecting yourself through a set of rules. And uh, it's just kind of weird. If you want to be a boxer, go call out boxers. I'm fine with that. I think Jake will bring a lot of eyes, like you said, to boxing. And uh, it'll, it'll only help the sport. But you can't just keep bringing in people that are clearly unqualified to fight somebody right. who now has a pro record and an undefeated one at that. And, and all knockouts. And, and yeah. all knockouts. You can't keep bringing in YouTube video gamers and people like Nate Robinson. No, no offense, he is a, a high-level athlete, but... That's just, it's just a different thing. Yeah, absolutely. And and Nate, uh, you you brought up a good point because Jake is kind of getting into what I would describe as no man's land. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's too good now to fight someone who he, he's proven to us that he can beat people at boxing who don't box. Yes, yeah. great. That's really not that big of an accomplishment. Now he's getting to the point where he can actually really hurt somebody like right. that. We saw him really hurt Nate Robinson last night, and I didn't like to see that. No. The um, ref should have stopped The ref should have stopped it after the second knockdown. It Maybe even the first. But either way. but And now what we need to see is, can Jake beat people at boxing who do boxing? You know, right. And that's where he's going to have to kind of sacrifice a little bit of the clout. The person standing across the ring from you is not going to be 
an internationally known celebrity. It doesn't need to be KSI. It doesn't need to be a basketball player. It doesn't be, need to be a mixed martial artist who literally doesn't train striking in Ben Askren. Who do, like, let's, let me pick the mixed martial artist with the worst striking in the welterweight division, who's also, by the way, retired, right. and say, I want to box him. That's yeah. ridiculous. If you want to be taken seriously as a boxer, right. then you need to now at a 2-0 and with two knockouts – you you need to t you need to fight a guy who's maybe one and one in pro boxing right. who had an amateur career maybe two and zero oh with one knockout you know you you need to start to Even and I the think the commissions field. are not going to allow him to keep beating up people that don't video box. gamers and stuff right like and that. and nor should they no because that's it's not the right thing to do and but he he's kind of he wants the he wants the clout he wants right. the name and the name is either somebody who doesn't box who's a celebrity of some kind or a top level person in mixed martial arts or, or boxing and Jorge Masvidal, Conor McGregor, well, you are not even in the stratosphere of being ready to take on one of those two guys. And just like a commission shouldn't sanction you to fight a YouTuber, they all, for, for their safety, they also shouldn't sanction you to fight Conor McGregor for your safety. So you're going to have to kind of, it's going to be interesting to see who and how they choose his opponents next. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And also the draw thing. I mean, Jake Paul is a big YouTube guy. He's a big, as far as combat sports go and, and worldwide celebrity and, and stuff like that, ability to draw, he's he's not even in the same stratosphere as Conor McGregor or Jorge Masvidal. Right. They're, they're pulling real numbers. They're doing real business with the UFC, fighting the best of the best. I'd prefer to see them stick to that. Every now and again, we can see a one-off. But there is a market for Jake Paul, and I think that if he starts fighting other boxers around his same skill level, regardless of the clout level and the, the following and all of that stuff, we could see some competitive matches for Jake, and, and I don't think that's a, a bad thing. The market, the, the, the way to maximize the two markets that we've been talking about this video is Jake Paul's, which he's going to bring eyes that aren't watching boxing, and the Mike Tyson uh, fans of old, and even the, the people like me who are too young to watch him, but have always wanted to see a Mike Tyson fight, right? So there's people that want to see legends. There's people that want to see YouTubers. It's best to put them on the cards together, have these sort of weird nights of fights that, like Triller just did. Look, Triller played into it perfectly. They, I had never even heard of Triller until I, last night. Me either. I, I had only seen the app running a couple of times and, and through commercials and stuff like that. Uh, I think that uh, there's a few people that deserve credit, and I don't know who the guy who promoted this fight is, but uh, for a first-time promotion... It was pretty good. And we know it wasn't Oscar De La Hoya. It wasn't Bob Arum. It wasn't Dana White. It wasn't Eddie Scott Hearns, Coker. Yeah. It was none of those guys. So I don't know who this un unknown promoter was, but he didn't do a bad job. Uh, no, for a first you know, time, definitely. And, and I, was it Triller? Is this, did Triller actually, did they sponsor the show? Did they put on the show? I mean, I wish there would have been some more information around that. Maybe there's some out there that I just haven't seen, but I actually looked up and tried to see you know, is there a big name promoter behind right. this? And I couldn't find anything about it. Yeah, and and there's a few things. Obviously, we could. There's a lot you can fix for the for the next Triller boxing event or whatever you call it. Uh, the 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 energy was a little bit low. Uh, the the even with the music, which was crazy. I I can't yeah. believe that all that. Music. It's like we were watching a concert and a and a boxing match would sporadically break out. Right. Way, way too much music from people that I have no idea who they are. Maybe right. they're YouTube people that are friends of Jake Paul's. Mm -hmm. That's not my lane. Yeah. Not my music, not my lane, whatever. But you yeah, know, it, e I'm, even if it is my music, I don't want to see it at I'm, a boxing match. Right, and if you want to have Snoop Dogg commentate your fight, that's fine. I don't really need to see him perform his songs from the 90s in between fights. While smoking a joint. While smoking a joint and, and talking to Sugar Ray Leonard is wild. I don't think we'll see Joe Rogan in between fights at the next uh, UFC pay-per-view smoking weed and telling comedy jokes in between the fights. So uh, there's just some things you can fix. Yeah. And I think they wanted to just be as star-studded of, of, of an event as possible. And so they're like, let's throw Neo in for the, for the national anthem. Let's throw Snoop Dogg out there since he's already commentating. You know, I think Israel Adesanya is uh, definitely somebody who deserves some credit. He, he is somebody who had never commentated, in, as far yeah. as I know, and he he knocked it out of the park. Aside from Mauro Ranella, whose career 
at, yeah. is with the long hair. Look at he looked good. with the long yeah. hair, by the way. Yeah, he looked good. Uh, Israel looked really good out there. I think that uh, there's a future for him in commentating yeah. after his career. And I think the UFC will even uh, take notes of that and, and bring him onto the panel for the UFC. Israel's such a rising star. And, yeah. you know, we could do a whole nother video. We've done a bunch of videos on him. He's, he's, he's so good at what he yeah. does. He's, he checks all the boxes. He looked like a million bucks in the tuxedo Knows last what he's night. talking about. Exactly. And he, he sold the fight. And I think in a lot of ways, Sugar Ray Leonard could take an, a page out of Izzy's book because yeah. Sugar Ray Leonard looked like he couldn't be less excited for what was taking place there. Yeah. And they ask him who's going to win. He's got no idea. What do you think about the fight? Well, I think these guys are past their prime. Uh, maybe you didn't get the memo that the check that whoever the promoter is, whose name is yet to be determined, right. uh, wrote you was to hype this fight and do your best to sell it and make it enjoyable. We know it's a YouTube star fighting a, a guy a, a who doesn't player. fight and, yeah. and two guys who have a combined age of 105. We get all that. But please sell the fight. That's right. what you're here to do. Right. Israel Adesanya with the skills that he has and the, uh, the you know, the name that he has, you know, created and, and, and picked up for himself. He could have sat there and stuck his nose up at this fight and realistically had every right to do it and, and laughed at all the combinations and the and the sloppiness. But he didn't. He You know, when, when yeah. Jake Paul landed a nice shot, he gave him the credit. When Nate uh, Robinson rushed him and, and connected on something he gave him some yeah. credit he didn't just dog the whole thing i think that was really smart uh you never diminish the product that you're working for and uh <clears throat> as far as the main event yeah i think it was i think it was a lot of fun i think uh people are going to want to see more of that as long as we can keep these older guys safe yeah. and healthy and then you know one other thing one other point that has been sticking out in my mind is uh a few months ago uh, LeBron James and Colby Covington had a little bit of a beef through the internet. Somehow Colby was calling out LeBron saying he wasn't a real tough guy. And then LeBron responded with like, Oh, you, yeah. you know, something about you don't want to see me in the ring or the octagon, something crazy like that. I think what people need to realize now after watching Jake Paul and Nate Robinson, which was like a, uh, uh, a, a Kmart version, no offense to Kmart, a Kmart version of Colby versus, uh, LeBron James to, to realize that Le, LeBron James, no matter what kind of athlete he is, N Nate Robinson, no, what kind of, no matter what kind of athlete he is, isn't a competitor in the sport of mixed martial arts or boxing. And you know what? Jake Paul, who's only had one fight before this, and it was against a YouTuber that he couldn't finish, and uh, Colby Covington, who's been a world champion in the hardest division, in the hardest sport, in the hardest everything, uh, was able to... You, you know, all these all these things, LeBron James has no room to yeah. call out Colby Covington, just like Nate Peterson or Robertson had no yeah. room to call out <laughs> Jake Paul. Sorry, yeah. Nate. That was my friend. Yeah, we have Nate a friend Peterson. named Nate Peterson. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Shout out. Um, yeah, what you, I'll sum up what you just said in one sentence. Yeah. A fight between Colby Covington and LeBron James would be as bad for LeBron James as a one-on-one -on -one basketball match between Colby Covington and LeBron James would be for Colby. Yes. And this is what these guys need to understand. And I respect, like you said, it, it does take some balls to get in there and fight somebody. And it really, you, you, it does take a special character and, and a warrior spirit in your heart. I do believe that. But please stop getting in the boxing ring if you're not training boxing you can get hurt or killed in there right. if you're a youtuber and you want to box i'm for it i'm down for it right but you have to start from the beginning you have to go to class you have to learn the techniques you have to get in there and, and spar lightly do a lot of body work get in there with people who know what they're doing who are not going to hurt you and build yourself up to a point in which you feel like you can step in there and and actually fight somebody nate robinson had no business with a professional boxing license in there last night it was very clear that it's somebody of his athletic ability I know people who are less athletic than him who train boxing for a full year and perform way better than he did last night mm -hmm. he did not train twice a day six days a week for a year including sparring I can tell you that full stop he didn't yeah uh, so so please if you're gonna do it I'm all for it but actually do it in a way that's gonna keep you safe and keep it somewhat competitive because what I saw last night happen to Nate Robinson, I don't wanna see happen to anybody else. Right. And everybody was worried about Jones and, and Tyson. Those guys, are you kidding me? They're just fine. Those, those guys are gonna be okay. Right. I worry about the guys like Nate Robinson. And I, and I guess we can kind of, kind of wrap on that because I, I, I would like to see more of 
Jones, Tyson, that you know, and, and what they said in, in the post fight interview was they're thinking about doing a rematch. Yeah. They're thinking about calling Evander in. Yeah. Maybe they'll maybe Evander will wear headgear if he's fighting Mike just yeah. to protect those ears. Right. But uh, you know, I, I want to see more of that. And I and I want to see more of Jake Paul, to be honest. But I want to see less of guys who don't know what the hell they're doing right. in there getting hurt. Right. That, nobody wants to see that. Absolutely not. And if you're a fan of a LeBron James and you care about his safety, then don't put him in there with somebody like a Colby Covington. And and don't go on Twitter and put that you believe in a poll that he would beat Colby Covington because if Jake Paul can do what he did to Nate Robinson, imagine what a UFC world champion would do to somebody with equal experience as Nate Robinson. Absolutely. Well, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's not normally the type of video that we make. We normally talk about MMA, uh, professional high-level athletes, but it was fun and it was an event and it was a moment in history and we yep. thought it was worth talking about. So we hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check us out on audio where you listen to podcasts. And what two legends do you want to see mash up next? I think I want to see a rematch first. I want to see a rematch and I want to see him get Evander in there and maybe the Spider Anderson Silva. Let's do it. Chew on that one, guys. Have a great day. Peace.